Yako, thanks for sitting down with me today. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much for being here. Yako, why is consolidating CPS's seed treatment offering so important? And and what does that tell us about the consolidation that's going on within the uh, within the industry? You know, I, th I think if you look at all the market players today, um, there's a lot of big companies partnering with smaller companies, um, procuring smaller companies. I think we have a lot of options out there today, which is a good thing. You know, 20 years ago, we didn't have these options. Um, Biologics has really come into the marketplace today. A uh, lot of good technology coming from Israel, South Africa, companies like that. And it's great to see the American market actually filtering that in. The, the issue that we had being one of the biggest agricultural companies in the world is that we have so many options and once you have too many options, uh, trading is very tough, inventory is very tough, reporting, uh, your rebate structure, and then obviously what do you sell to the grower? Mm -hmm. And I think the, 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 the end point, we needed to be safe, accurate, and we need our grower to be happy with the final product. And the final product should be yield, and that is our goal. And a reasonably easy one to measure. Well, it is for sure. I mean, yeah, the combine monitor will tell us that. Exactly. Uh, we know what we put onto the seed. And if everything went according to plan as far, you know, following our stewardship goals and um, our formulation goals and accuracy goals, I think we can give the grower exactly what he needs in a very measurable way. The seed treatment market is expected to double by 2018. Is the retail side of this ready for that? And, and, and what has CPS done to kind of properly position that within the organization? That's a very good question. And I think in the last 12 months, one of my key goals was looking at infrastructure, knowing that this is happening. Um, we want to grow our business, so which means we have to grow our sites. And we can't just put in any equipment. You know, we have to sit down and make sure while we're purchasing this, while we're making the capital investment, we have to do it the right way. Um, that, I believe, is it's key to partner with national retailers or manufacturers and sitting down and having something that is unique to us. So my goal is to double our output rate right now, and that's actually a pretty easy target for us. The more challenging target for us is to make sure that we follow um, our safety goals and our stewardship goals. Because it's easier to buy equipment, it's another thing training people and then keeping the same people year by year to run that equipment. And I think that's where we need to follow and have only key focus products, let's say three, four different uh, main seed treating packages, with selected equipment, and then make it very easy for the operator and the salesman to support those products. I've, I've heard you talk before about when you're evaluating equipment that the, the, th the three P's are in place, performance, yep. profitability, and partnership. Yep. You've talked a little bit about how important partnership is. How does that fit in together with the performance and the profitability? Well, you know, you're talking about doubling the growth. We don't want to buy equipment right now that can do, let's say, 2,000 pounds a minute. Mm -hmm. And then three years down the line, we want 3,000 pounds a minute. Because the problem you have is now you have to get rid of that previous equipment. Where do you recycle that to? So what we do now, the performance side, we want to overperform the machines right now. So I want to treat her, if we're going to do 1,500 pounds a minute, um, you know, let's say 2,000 kgs a minute, I want a machine that can actually do 4,000 kilograms or 3,000 pounds in the future. And I want something where the, the tanks and pumps can be updated to the same treater. We don't have to change that out. That is a performance side. And performance, obviously, is not just the speed, but the accuracy. We, we, we want very little dust off. Uh, we want a high effective feed coating rate on our seed. Uh, we don't want no breakage and no environmental exposure to the local environment or to the operator. That's performance for us. CPS has had some success that uh, has been, quite frankly, the envy of the industry. Anything you can put your finger on as to why that is the case? You know, I think in my role, one of the things I quickly realized in our company, it's a massive company, but if you sit in our office with our vice president, the head of our seed business and chemical business, it feels like a small company. Mm -hmm. I think I can go to my management with a, a strategy suggestion or a recommendation, and they absolutely have time to think about that. The good thing about CPS is most of our top management started at branch level. They were the branch manager, they ran the equipment, they did the sales to the end customer. That is a difference, we don't just have PhD or you know someone with very high caliber schooling, these are people who know the industry to the ground level. That is what I think makes a difference with CPS. They've made it happen already. 
they, they know what it takes e to exactly they know, they know the frustration they know the challenges they know what the grower doesn't like because a lot of them are growers themselves and I think with a, a, a company like Agrium that actually is our umbrella company of everything mm -hmm. you know the Canadian company Agrium is very um, I would say forward-thinking and they pick management that is ground level that they know that I come from the roots and know how to manage a business we talked about the consolidation of the of some of your lineup but CBS is always looking for new products to add to the portfolio. It's been a strength, I think, of the sourcing of these new products. Can you give us an idea of wh where's your attention right now? What kind of products are you, uh, you mentioned biologicals, yep. wh wh where is the effort and attention being spent right now? You know, for sure biologicals, I think we're most probably three, four years out from really getting a big um, influx from biologicals. But but now we've got some key ones that started out. Mm -hmm. um, obviously with CPH we've got buying power. Right. We've got a footprint. That makes us purchase more chemicals more readily than smaller companies. Right. We also have a bigger testing program, bigger research program, support program. So I would say biological is the first thing, but for right now we want to reduce the rate of hard chemistries. We want to make sure we've got chemistries that is safe again for the local environment, for the local operator that's you know working on that. So polymers has been a massive drive for mm -hmm. us. I want a good seed coder that uh, keeps my chemical on the seed uh, through the treater, through the conveyor, through the planter, into the ground and then keeps the chemical around the seed while the seed is busy coming, you know, uh, and we've got the growth coming from the plant. Mm -hmm. We don't want the, it to you know, leach away through the water line. So polymers, biologicals, and then looking at some key combinations because you know, I, I've made this statement before, there's no Messiah seed treatment out there today. No. I mean, a lot of these chemistries are pretty, pretty old. And I think what, what we would like to do now, and what I've started initiating is blending a little bit better uh, branded products together, okay. and then try to make something that works for us as CPAs. Your own recipe. Uh, truthfully, our own recipe, you know, we, we own a company called Loveland, mm -hmm. and Loveland is absolutely great with this. You know, they'll go out and they'll procure generic formulations, they will get proprietary brands as branded products, and they will make something that's very unique for CPAs. Loveland gives us an edge that none of our supply, uh, com competitors have out there. So it's, it's one-two punch as far as research and then actually having something. You talked about the, the footprint and, and the size of CPS. I don't think most people realize. Can you give me some numbers? Like what, what, what are we talking about for lo locations, staff? Can you throw any numbers yeah. out for me? You know, I think at last count we've got, a, you know, I think 15,000 people working right. for us. Um, in the US, we're getting close to 1,000 branches out there right now. Right. Um, I mean, so if you take this, anything from you know 10 to 20 people at a branch. Uh, in Canada, we've been um, really investing a lot into Canada, um, just acquired by Terra. Mm -hmm. So that gives us a massive footprint in Canada. Australia, we have a massive, massive output in Australia. Right. Uh, the same with New Zealand. And I think there's a lot of emerging markets. South America is one that's on our focus now. But, you know, it's just like, like my, manage, my manager likes to tell me, let's focus on right now. Let's, let's, let's make sure we have everything right. And then we move on to um, the next big project. Mm -hmm. I think South America is the next big project for us. Right. Perfect. Sounds like you got uh, you got lots of pieces on the go. <laughs> I appreciate that. And thanks for taking the time to sit down with me. Thank you very much for the time. Thank you. Thank you.